Have you ever wondered what an actuarial analyst really does day to day? I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their first actuarial job without an internship. In today's video, I have brought on Kiana, an actuarial analyst working in a non-traditional actuarial role here in Canada. I'm so excited to share this with you because since I'm no longer working in an actuarial position, or regular one anyway, it's hard for me to be able to share this type of content of realistic days in the life of what you can expect later on. And I know as a future actuary, these are things you want to know. You want to know what you can expect once you really go into the workforce and start your actuarial job. So Kiana will definitely be giving you lots of insight into that and along the way she also answers several different questions that we get asked all the time about what it's really like working in an actuarial role. She talks about things like how much Excel she uses day to day. She talks about whether she works more in a group setting or more independently. These are questions that a lot of future actuaries have and Kiana has the answers. So without further ado, here is Kiana's day in the life. Hi everyone, my name is Kiana. I am an actuarial analyst and I'm going to be taking you guys through my work day. Before we jump into the vlog, the video, I'm just going to give you guys a bit of background about me. So I am a recent graduate of McMaster University in Canada. I graduated in June 2021. I recently started working at a life insurance company in September 2021 and we are currently recording in February 2022. So all that to say, I'm very new to my job-ish, barely about six months in and it's been good so far. Far. It's been fun. I've been placed on a lot of different tasks to work on. I've been learning a lot. So hopefully we're going to touch on most of what I'm doing today. I'm going to quickly sign on to work just because I need to hop into some emails and see what's going on for the day busy day you know i'm joking um but yeah i just need to organize everything that's going on i'm gonna share that with you guys and yeah we're gonna talk about some fun actuarial stuff today so yeah <laughs> Okay, so we moved over to my desk and I've outlined my day. I'm quickly gonna tell you guys the department I work on, just give you a bit more backstory about that so you understand what I'm talking about when we go throughout the day. So I am under a team called Actuarial Best Practices and there are two sub teams under this one umbrella team. For the first side of what I do, so this is my primary role. I basically serve as a liaison between different business units at the company and or corporate department, which is responsible for creating different financial reports and just reports in general so basically I gather a lot of data from different lines of business at the company I take all that information I consolidate it so basically making sure all the information makes sense making sure nothing's missing following up with people to make sense of something to see if things need to be corrected and also just making sure that when I submit it to corporate all the information is using the same number format clear of typos just stuff like that um, I ship it off to well, ship it off to corporate and they you know use it for actual financial reports so some of the reports we do are like source of earning reports expected profit reports basis change summary reports just kind of stuff like that and typically for this role i use a lot of excel and there is a lot of reporting so you know getting familiar with like microsoft word office it's not your traditional pricing or valuation role but it's very it's a very good role to be in to learn just a lot of actuarial information knowledge what a lot of the terms mean and it's nice to see this side of the business now on the other sub team that i'm a part of i'm really new to this team i started i think two or three weeks ago maybe two and it's basically ifrs 17 that's what that's what i think the whole team kind of revolves their work around um ifrs 17 is basically to my understanding an accounting standard it's kind of like a law i would say so just a way of reporting certain numbers and information um, i hope i don't confuse you guys um but it's a very it's a standard that different companies i believe are adopting i i think everyone has to um so i'm in the department that is basically preparing some of our models and software and stuff like that for ifrs 17 instead of what we would have been using in the past i use a lot of ggy access on this role a lot of excel way more detailed <laughs> 
Excel work than I was doing before, um, which is kind of fun and exciting because I've definitely been able to build up my technical experience way more in these two weeks than I was before. What I was doing on that first team is definitely very concept based, knowledge based, and I find that this side is very, you know, the behind the scenes, like the inner workings of the model and the software. So it's been really interesting working on both sides. Um, and I actually, because I'm so new to the team, I've been put in a lot of training sessions. So I'm quickly going to hop in a training session right now and then we're going to talk. This one's a two and a half hour training session. So I'm prepared. I have, I'm going to get a snack or something just to sit through and learn. But yeah. It's getting a bit dark so I had to move over to my couch but I thought I would catch you guys up on what's been going on today so I finally wrapped up my training session and then I hopped on a call with a team member to kind of discuss a task that I'm working on and I thought it would be a good idea to talk about two really common questions that I get asked especially by future actuaries so the first one do you work much on your team or do you primarily work independently as I mentioned earlier I'm on two sub teams and when I'm working on that more independent role that I told you guys about it's it's very much a solo job. I don't really meet with many people. I don't really speak much with other people. And in some ways I definitely like that because especially since it's also very project based or just, you know, report based. So everything has a deadline. I kind of just chill through the day and do my own thing and just submit things. I only really had calls when it was a check-in with my manager or if I needed, I don't know, help on a certain thing that I couldn't figure out or if I'm following up on missing information through email. But yeah, I really spent most of that time working by myself and then when I moved on to this new role a couple weeks ago it is very collaborative in a good way I have multiple calls per day which I do like especially being someone new that started by working from home it's nice to you know technically know people better now because before even my team members I spoke to every now and again but I wasn't as familiar with them because I never really worked with them and I like feeling like I'm a part of a community or a group in that sense so it's nice for me to work as a team so I would say half and half it just depends on what I'm working on and then the second thing I want to touch on is problems on the job and how I solve them so especially as someone that's fairly new to the role I definitely run into a lot of problems that honestly I just don't really know how to solve sometimes I understand the scope of what they're asking me to do but the details the acronyms especially when you just start working you're gonna see that you know a lot of the people that have been there they've been using the same couple terms over and over again to a point where they're just kind of shorten all the long terms and you're just seeing a bunch of acronyms when you open many of their documentation so I definitely just ask questions when I run into situations where I don't really know what to do of course there's a balance between asking too many questions like sometimes it's good to spend some time doing the digging and seeing how you could figure it out yourself you actually also learn more when you spend the time trying to solve it yourself but I also think it's important to recognize if you're on a team that's very deadline based like the team I'm on now there's only so much you can do when it comes to you know using your own time to solve it especially during work hours it's especially important for me that if I have an issue to speak up because we not only work with people in Canada but we also work with people on our team in other countries like Ireland so you know obviously we're on different schedules and it's just important to really be mindful of the deadlines you have and you know deliver on time another thing I'll quickly say when it comes to reaching out to ask for help I personally I personally love having calls. If I could just, you know, call someone every time I had a problem, that's how I would do it. But you have to also remember that when you're new, you may not have that many things in your calendar, but your managers, your coworkers, some of them do, so they may not always have time to take calls, which is why it's really good to learn how to summarize your thoughts, understand what you're doing and summarize your thoughts so that if you do have a call, you're able to just be very straight to the point or also learn how to, you know, place all your information in an email, add screenshots if you need to, just summarize the information so your question can be very clear. I think, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's always nice to show where you think the solution lies but maybe you're not sure exactly how to approach it i think that makes you look like you put a lot of initiative into the work you're doing so yeah that's how i personally go about solving problems if you guys have any further questions feel free to ask them in the comments down below it's a bit later and before i go i kind of wanted to talk about one final topic which is 
how much of Excel do I use? How many programming languages do I use? What programming languages? What software? Softwares? What, <laughs> what do I use? For both the teams that I've been talking about throughout this video, I use Excel. We exhaust Excel. Excel is in everything. Honestly, I've been in several departments at this company also. Excel is a big tool. I will say now I don't use much of Excel VBA, which is a programming language within Excel. I don't use that much of that. I have worked with it, but I've really just changed code in order to perform a function, which is what I find for most of the roles I've been in. It's very rare that you're really doing something super complex in VBA. You'll find that a lot of the times most of the code is already created and maybe you just need to make the code work faster or make it manipulate more rows or less rows or just whichever changes you make to the model but very rare are you building a code from scratch so yeah I would say very light VBA experience in this role but a lot of Excel and in so many different ways that it's hard to just tell you what it is I think it's very different when you use Excel to perform an actual task versus me just calling out random functions and features I've used it's just not the same um, this is why you know I know Bria always recommends use doing Excel projects to get experience I highly agree with that you're not gonna get to understand Excel by just you know knowing a couple formulas and what they do so yeah lots of excel programming language i don't really use any like i said vba is the only one i've personally touched on but very rare there is a programming language in ggy axis which is a software that we use and it has its own code so i've gotten quite a lot of not a lot but i've gotten experience with that but once again nothing major very simple straightforward lines of code just a lot of validation for example if this equals this do that very simple but yeah that's as much coding experience that i've gotten so far and yeah those are all the softwares i use i guess there's also microsoft access but still very little everything i do is in excel so yeah so that's everything i had to share with you guys today i'm gonna get back to work thank you for watching i hope this was helpful like i said earlier if you guys have any questions feel free to comment them down below if I don't get to see them. The Etched Up Trail team, I'm sure, will get to them for you. So, yeah. Big thank you to Kiana for creating this amazing day in the life video for you. I know it was so inspiring and motivational to actually finally think about getting your own actuarial job. If you want to watch more day in the life videos from me personally, then these two right here are ones that I created when I was working in my valuation position. And this one right here is about what I did in in my internship positions. So those are great ones to go watch after this video. I will link to them down below in the description. Now for today's question of the week, let me know down in the comments, would you rather work in a group setting or an independent setting in your actuarial position? Let me know down in the comments. I'll be reading all of them and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.